Hi, welcome to channel two and welcome to more of a demo of the Matchless HC30. So I just released a video comparing the Matchless to my camper. You know, if I really would be amazed by having this amp finally in my studio. And I'm definitely amazed, but now I wanna make a video just playing, a cam uh, playing the Matchless, I should say. Find the sounds I love, find the sounds I'm gonna use, you know, in the studio or on stage or whenever. So I just set up some of my favorite pedals right now, or some of the pedals I use in the camper as well, like the compressor, the Klon KTR, the King of Tone, and Logman. Of course, <laughs> the uh, Automatone Preamp Mark II by Chase Bliss, and the Strymon Volante for some reverb and delay sounds. And now I really wanna demo the Tele as well, because you know the Tele and the Matchless is just a match made in heaven. So, Let's turn on the amp and now I'm just recording the amp with the aux. I'm still listening to the amp via the uh, speaker cabinet 2x12. So if you wanna see more of this raw uncut material, I just felt like recording something I would usually not do and put it on my second channel. So if you wanna see more of this just unedited, just more, you know, just getting a little bit deeper and just experimenting something, just subscribe to this channel and maybe there will be some more stuff coming soon. Anyway, I'm now plugged into the first channel the top boost or the treble boost channel, which is the triode uh, channel. And this is just very straightforward. It's three knobs, volume, bass, and treble. It's as easy as it gets. So this is more of a clean, slightly overdriven sound, as I said. Let's just put the EQ at noon. That's always how I start out with anything, basically. And we can hear it sounds great. So we're done. This is a good sound. Maybe add some bass and dial the volume a little bit up to get some of that nice break up. A little bit too much. Sometimes I feel like obliged to turn a knob anything other than 12 because it looks like I just put it on 12. But sometimes, or you know, a lot of times, stuff just sounds best at noon because that's where you go from and you can adjust. Anyway, I think I like this sound best. Okay, so this channel isn't really designed, I think, to use a lot of overdrive pedals, but let's just see what happens if we put the KTR in front. Like the KTR is a very mild, you know, I think you all know the Klon Centaur, well, this is basically the reproduction of that, uh, that pedal. And now it's set up as a drive, but I wanna see how it works when I use it as a boost. So this is the volume, this is the gain. Gain is almost all the way down and volume is at noon. So let's see how it pushes the amp. Pretty sweet, so it gets more beefy. Add some gain. Ooh, that's pretty sweet. Something I learned that the first channel is a really good, good channel, and I think it sounds pretty awesome actually. Um, I think we should go to the next channel, or maybe oh, I just want to love to see some compression. So this is the Kelly 76 by Origin Effects, a very good. See 
how it adds sustain to this thin telly. <laughs> Well, that's all I wanted to know for this channel. I think it's time to move on to my favorite channel, as you all know, the second channel. So um, this is the EF86 preamp tube, pentode clipping. So this channel, so this is where we left off in the video, I guess, sort of. Okay, so the master volume, when you push it in, nothing happens. The master volume is just not engaged. When you push it out, you can... <laughs> master volume to dial back the volume to your level so now it's not doing anything so it's loud it's really loud I'm using the aux to just attenuate some of the yeah the madness so I can still talk the volume let's just put it at noon and the tone so this is actually a very interesting thing volume at noon I want to talk about the tone control so the tone control on this channel is very well it's not it's very unique, I can say. So it's a click control. It starts at noon, at the, let's just call it one, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, and six different settings you can choose from. And the more to the right or clockwise we go, the more beefy or punchy, or not, not punchy, but more beefy and more low end the sound entails. So when I start at the top, it's the thinnest sound basically you get. Let's just play something. So this is the thinnest sound possible. It's a very good sound because the low end doesn't like um, negatively impact the, the great sound of the guitar, the nice chime nice mids. Sometimes a lot of folks play with too much low end, in my opinion, uh, which just distorts the overall sound a little bit. So let's just play and move the... One step further. So you can immediately hear there's more low end to the sound. It's not bad, it's very nice. One more. It really starts to be a little bit too gritty for me. I don't like too much low end, so maybe we should change pickups. Yeah, now this do def definitely makes sense using this setting. Okay, let's move one more. Okay, so now I know what happens. I really love the neck pickup. It's just, when I have a go-to sound, it's, it's the neck pickup. Even when playing lead stuff, it's just. And even higher gain stuff, I just like, I just like it. It's more mellow for me. It's less, less bright, a little bit just sweet. I can call it sweet, I guess. And when you dial too much low end in the amp, it just gets too much sweetness, too much low end, and it's, it, the buttery is becoming fat, like bad fats. Uh, so, um, when I would play on the neck pickup, I would not put in too much low end like this. Or... And when you go to the neck pickup, the bridge pickup, sounds great but we could use some more low end so we should find some middle ground for just one setting because you don't want to change it up so I think setting three or two are the, the ones we're gonna look for but also when we let's now go to the volume because when we dial in more volume the more gain the more effect the tone is gonna have let's just see so volume at noon let's just dial to Let's say two o'clock. 
So yeah, that's when I play an E chord. A little bit too muddy for me, so. Yeah, the bridge is okay, very good. But I also like the E chord with the neck. The less low end, the E sounds very nice still with the neck. So I think the second EQ setting is gonna be the one to do it all for me, I guess. So let's, I think this is like the good setting for the volume. Like this is where we're not over empowering the amp and we're using all the goodness from the matchless. Because I think when we go to like say three o'clock. <laughs> Sounds okay. <laughs> okay. So I think the sweet spot of this amp is around somewhere here. And now I want to see what we can do with pedals to just enhance the sound a little more if we want to. So very great sound. Let's see what the clan does. And now it's still in a boost setting. So we're just hitting the front of the amp a little bit harder with the clan, the KTR. To, to be honest, it's just there's just more of stuff I'm not particularly fond of. So, without, so let's try something different. Let's dial back the volume of the of the KTR because hitting the front, hitting like the amp harder right now will just clip the tubes in the meshes more. And we found that the, the, the volume of this amp is now at a sweet spot. So if we clip the amp harder, we're just basically just turning up the volume. Not like it's exactly the same, but it's more or less the same. So maybe we want to add the gain instead of volume. So let's dial back the volume a little bit. Add some gain. So this is gain, EQ, and volume. <laughs> This to me sounds a little bit better actually, yes. This is a killer uh, just rock rhythm sound and maybe we can even play some leads on this. Let's add some delay. Yeah, definitely. So right now I'm going to the king of tone. Um, there's two channels on the King of Tone, so it's basically two overdrive pedals in one. There's two settings. This is basically the boost setting. You can see that by the yellow light. And the red light is the gain set, or the overdrive setting. 
and we can switch these around with dip switches in the pedal itself but this is i think how they come stock so gain going into the boost so the boost comes after the gain so the way i set this up is this can also be a boost so we can boost into the gain pedal or we can boost the gain pedal usually you want to boost the gain pedal if you use a booster for example like a lead boost or um, yeah so you want to have a louder gain stage if you want to have more gain you want to boost the overdrive pedal because the over, it, it's get, it gets more overdriven that way. When we're using the boost pedal after the gain right now, we're probably not gonna see a m much increase in volume because we're already clipping the matchless. So it just, it starts to clip more. Usually that works better if you have a sort of clean amp to go from. Anyway, let's dial up the drive and the volume a bit low. So, Clean, no pedals. <laughs> it screams very friendly to me, a very friendly overdrive sound. It, just, it sounds like it's just cutting off some of the highs, cutting off some of the lows, and just have a nice package so there isn't too much weird, obnoxious stuff going on. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what it's doing. It can be very nice. Let's do some more drive. Lush, lushy drive. Sweet, yeah. So let's dial up the volume a little bit and see if we can push the amp a little bit harder so it gets a little bit more gritty as well. There's a nice grunge and creed. Nice and friendly. Things you only see in the second channel. Yeah, this is awesome. So this is just a very good sound to go from. So let's add some compression and some overdrive and play some. Now we're using the second channel of the Analog Man King of Tone, um, the, the boost channel basically, but it boosts differently than the, um, the KTR. The KTR mm -hmm. is very MIDI and this one not so much. <laughs> So one thing I'm not too fond of right now is that I'm running the reverb and the delay in front of the gain of the amp. I'm just plugging everything into the inputs. So now the overdrive of the matchless the clipping is also affecting the reverbs and the delays. And usually that's not a too good idea because you want to have a clean reverb and a clean delay because it gets messy if you overdrive the delays. This amp has FX loops, two that is, one for this uh, channel and one for this channel. 
but the FX loop aren't what we are used to. The FX loops are TRS cables. So there's two inputs, one for this and one for this. And the input is also the output. It's basically a stereo cable. So I think I need a TRS cable to two jacks, and then one jack goes to the in of the FX loop and the other of the out of the FX loop. And right now I do not have such a cable. So I need to find myself one of those. Then I can properly run the reverbs and the delays and the modulation stuff. That's, that's gonna clean up the sound much better because um, I'm probably going to use this amp a lot for its overdrive sounds. If I would be running a clean sound, that wouldn't be a problem too much because a clean sound doesn't affect the reverb. You see, it's nice and clean. But now when I dial up the volume, we don't like that sound, usually. Stephen Wilson might like it, and I like it in his music, but I don't like it in my playing. So that's why we're not going to use the reverb from now on. So the reason it's not happening when I'm using it with the FX loop is because the output tubes, the EO84s, aren't clipping that much or not. We're pushing the preamp tubes. So the preamp tubes are overdriven and then the sound goes from the preamp tubes to the delay and the reverb and then gets back sent up to the, um, the amp, still clean, and then the output tubes make it louder without overdriving the delays or the reverbs. So yeah, there we are. So one of my favorite sounds is gonna be this then, I think. show this. It's bringing some of that mids up, right? Anyway, yeah, so I think this is fun. I'm gonna just do this some more and then, you know, slowly, slowly you get to know the amp. Thank you for watching guys and uh, yeah, let's uh, subscribe if you wanna see more of this and let me know in the comment section if you want or not. If you think it's boring AF, fine for me, I don't mind. Take care.